in various parts of the city, nine people are suddenly getting kidnapped on the spot, regardless if they're in their cars or in the middle of their jobs. Moments later, these nine people appear unconscious inside a mysterious house. Lee wakes up on a bed, and after seeing a guy called I'll be on the bed next to hers, she goes out to investigate. Nobody answers when she says hello so she just keeps going, looking around until she finds two men lying unconscious in another room. Confused, Lee next goes to the main door and tries to open it, but the door is tightly locked. She also checks the windows, only to discover that all of them are blocked with walls of bricks. Next she goes to the basement in search of some sort of exit, but she finds nothing. Seeing no escape causes Lee to have a panic attack and she collapses on the floor. Moments later, Lee wakes up to the sound of Father Duffy checking on her and she looks around to learn there are nine people total trapped in here. While they wonder what's going on, suddenly they're greeted by a mysterious voice coming out of the speaker to tell them that they weren't chosen for who they are but for what they are. This voice also informs them that they've been brought together to play a game that will be the ultimate test of their human character, and it is purely for the entertainment of the watcher, who is observing and listening to them through 75 cameras and countless microphones installed all over the house. The winner of this game will be the last one to stay alive, they will not only be freed but will also be given five million dollars. Then the voice just vanishes, and the nine players immediately begin arguing. Some people believe the game is real while others don't, but the main concern is the implication that eight of them will die in some way. Suddenly Jay pulls a gun out of his pocket to show it to everyone, saying that the situation must truly be serious if the kidnappers let him keep it. Noticing everyone is terrified by the gun, Jay clarifies he is a cop, but the others still think it is unfair that he got to keep a weapon. Because of his humble background, Albie directs his anger toward Jay, explaining that his little brother had to suffer at the hands of corrupt white cops. At that moment, Francis interrupts the argument to share his conclusion, the Watcher wants them to kill each other. This causes everyone to freak out while Jay agrees with Francis, adding that once the game is over the one surviving will most likely be killed too. Then Jay suggests that they need to work together to find a way to escape and proposes the idea of hitting the front doors with the dining table, which is extremely heavy. Everyone accepts to help together except for Claire, who just sits around and watches while smoking. No matter how hard they try though, the door doesn't budge an inch. Next Jay tries firing at the bricks, but they're too thick to make a decent hole. Afterward the group decides to inspect every nook and cranny for any possible openings or hidden exits, which must exist because they somehow enter this place. Jay finds an iron bar and uses it to dig in the basement floor, but there's metal under it. Albi discovers a wooden square on the ceiling and manages to break it down, but it is also sealed. While everyone looks around to no avail, Claire gets her hands on the liquor cabinet and begins drinking. Eventually the group gives up and returns to the living room, where they tell Claire off for not helping and Jay decides to lock up the liquor cabinet for now since drinking will make their moods worse. Then the group has a talk and everyone swears they don't want to kill, but they also admit there are desperate people that would do anything for money. Suddenly they hear a sound coming from the kitchen so they go to check, discovering there is a dumb waiter with food. Their dinner consists of exactly a piece of chicken and one potato for each player, so the group sits in the dining room and after Duffy blesses their meal, they finally introduce themselves properly. Duffy is a priest, Jay is a cop, Lee is a dancer, Claire is a famous tennis player, Francis is a musician, Cynthia is his stay-at-home wife, Albi is a rapper, Max is a fashion designer, and Shona is an addict on parole. In fact she's got a bracelet monitor on her ankle, which gives the group hope that cops will come here looking for her. Lee doesn't eat meat and everyone is already fighting for her piece of chicken, but Jay exchanges his potato for it to avoid trouble. Albi laments that being brought here made him miss a meeting with a record company that could get him a deal, and when some players doubt his abilities, Albi impresses them with an improvised rap. After dinner, they discuss how to divide the rooms, of which there are five with two single beds each. Duffy will have a room for himself because he's a priest and Francis will stay with his wife, so the other six people get to choose their room partners by picking names. Jay ends with Leah, Claire with Shona, and Max with Albi. Each pair goes to their corresponding room, and moments later, Claire finds Shona going through her bag, which makes her furious and triggers a really dumb argument. Albi practices his rhymes in bed and Max is worried about having only one outfit for the entire stay, so he hangs his jacket carefully. Duffy takes his time praying, and Leah and Jay are chatting and sharing some things about their lives. Francis tells Cynthia that the money is very tempting, and she can't believe he's actually considering it. Hours of sleeping pass, and in the middle of the night, someone suddenly attacks Jay. After some struggle, Jay reaches for his gun, but the intruder immediately runs away and they can't see their face because it's dark. The commotion causes all the players to come out of their rooms and another argument begins as they point fingers at each other, 
tossing baseless accusations and making them doubt everyone. Al B is the main suspect because of his anger against Jay, and the comments start edging on racist. Duffy calms everyone down and sends them to bed. Later in the morning, the players come to the living room and discover that the heat is going up more and more by the second. Yet another argument starts that almost gets physical but suddenly they hear noises outside, and they assume it is the police tracking Shona's bracelet monitor. The group rushes to the front door to start shouting and banging like crazy while Francis watches them, thinking they are wasting their time. Desperate, Jay fires his gun, but the noises outside fade away and they are left alone again. This incident causes everyone to accept the reality of the situation and lose their last bit of hope. Jay releases the key to the liquor cabinet and everyone except for Duffy, Lee, and Jay proceeds to drink to forget. They also start playing some music, but when Albi hears is slow and depressing, he changes it to something more upbeat and soon the drinkers begin dancing together while the house keeps getting hotter. Meanwhile Francis tries to hit on Lee, but she reminds him of his wife and gets him to leave her alone. Then Francis sneaks to his room with a bottle of liquor, and by muffling the sound with the bedsheets, he breaks the bottle to make glass shards that can be used as a weapon. Then he hides one on the door frame and the rest inside the toilet tank. Eventually the group becomes too wasted to keep on dancing, leaving only Cynthia and Alby in the living room. Their dancing puts them quite close to each other, so when Francis comes in, he assumes the worst and attacks Albi for flirting with his wife. A fight soon ensues and while Cynthia is trying to pull them apart, Albi accidentally pushes her, which causes her to hit her head against the railing and die on the spot. Albi tries to apologize, but a furious Jay takes him away and locks him up in his room by putting the iron bar through the handles. Then the group covers the body with a sheet and takes it to the basement. For the rest of the day, the players wander around contemplating their situation. Francis finds his wife's lipstick and puts it on before kissing the mirror. In the evening, as the heat is getting unbearable, the players are annoyed to see they've been provided with a reduced portion of just potatoes. Albi begins banging on his door demanding to have his part, and after lots of pressure from the others, Jay goes and gives Albi just a tiny piece of potato. However Duffy thinks it's unfair and leaves to give more food to Albi. Worried, Jay rushes to stop him but the door has already been opened. Albi jumps out of the room and grabs the iron bar to start hitting Jay without mercy, completely destroying his face. When he snaps out of it and realizes what he's done, he hides back in his room. Duffy comes to check on Jay, who uses his last breath to give his gun to the priest. Jay's body is then covered and taken to the basement with Cynthia's. For the next meal, they receive extra food and wine with a good work note as a reward for killing. Lee and Duffy are the only ones eating in the dining room. All the others have become too paranoid and are now eating alone. Francis takes a portion to Albi saying he earned it and swears he understands Cynthia's death had been an accident, so he isn't angry with him. Moments later, Lee and Duffy go to check on Albi, only to find him dead and hanging from the ceiling with Max's scarf. When the news spread another argument ensues, and everyone suspects Francis of having sought revenge for his wife. Francis thinks Albi did do it to himself, then tries to pass the blame to Max because it was his scarf. Once again, it's Duffy who stops the fight because it's pointless, and everyone leaves in a different direction because they're wary of each other. Duffy and Lee take Albi's body to the basement and Francis continues to use the lipstick in private, showing he's losing his mind. Sometime later, Claire finds Shona touching her things again and a new argument starts, which quickly escalates into slapping each other. When Shona leaves to have a cigarette for her nerves, Claire grabs a corkscrew and stabs her. In another room, Lee is washing her face when Francis shows up and without further ado he rips the light fixture from the wall and dunks it in the sink full of water, which electrocutes Lee and makes her collapse to the ground. Meanwhile Duffy goes to talk to Max and tells him he only trusts him and Lee, so he wants to work together to survive. However Max is greedy and asks for more portions of food in exchange, but Duffy turns him down because it wouldn't be fair to the others. Max ignores him and tries to steal quite a large portion, so Duffy takes the gun out and makes him drop anything. Then Duffy starts guiding Max out of the kitchen, but when they cross the corridor they find Shona's body. While Max runs back to the kitchen, Claire tells Duffy that it was in self-defense, but Duffy tries to take her away anyway. Then they walk by Leah's bedroom and find her dead too, so while Duffy is blessing the body, Claire uses the chance to run too. At that moment Francis shows up and pretends to be surprised that Leah's dead, but Duffy sees right through him and raises his gun. When Duffy can't bring himself to shoot him, Francis starts making fun of him and demands to have the gun. Seeing no other option, Duffy shoots Francis but only hits him in the stomach. In the meantime, it turns out Lee is alive and waking up. She comes out and sees Duffy shooting Francis, so she immediately runs to hide in another room, where she accidentally slips and knocks over the toilet lid, allowing her to discover the glass shards. 
In the kitchen, Claire arrives to take some food only to suddenly be startled by Max, who will only share with her if she agrees to give him something in return. His hands on his belt imply something dirty, but then the belt comes off and Max uses it to choke Claire. Duffy arrives and begs Max to let her go, but since he won't, Duffy shoots him. At that moment Francis appears and stabs Duffy on the back with a shard he hit above the door, then he takes the gun and shoots Claire. Duffy begs for mercy, but Francis just goes ahead and kills him too. Since he doesn't know about Lee, Francis starts celebrating that he has won the game and begins yelling at the watcher, asking for his reward. Upstairs, Lee is using some bedsheets to retrieve a glass shard and accidentally drops the tank lid, revealing her location. Francis follows the noise and finds Lee running away, so he chases after her until she hides under the bed. Francis finds her and pushes off the mattress to shake the bed itself, then he begins dragging Lee out by her ankles, so Lee uses this chance to stab his leg before running again. Francis chases her again and corners her against the balcony, but when he charges toward her, they both topple over the railing and fall down right on the table. Leah lands on top of Francis and realizes that the fall caused the glass shard to stab his chest, so Francis is dead and she's the winner. Lee can't deal with the fact she's killed someone but at that moment, the front door opens with a blinding light and she walks through it to find a huge bag that supposedly has the money. Then she walks down the corridor and crosses another door that closes behind her, there she finds another house with winners from other games looking traumatized. Lee is terrified to realize this has just begun. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.